Kodak Retina 1A camera. This one has the Retina Zener f2.8 lens, the more commonly seen with the f3.5 lens. This camera is here for service and I'm pleased to see it because I'm getting a bit tired of uh, Bersomatics and Bersomatic modification projects. Thankfully they're all over and done with. So I'll get this camera apart. I've had a quick look at it. The focus is not bound up with dried out grease, but it's loose. Probably means the grease is dried out completely. The film advance seems okay. The frame counter pull is present and working. The shutter fires, but it's a little bit sluggish on the slower speeds. So it's certainly a camera that needs servicing, but it is by no means a crippled camera. I'll sort out the pieces I want to go through the ultrasonic cleaner. From the pieces that I don't want to go through the cleaner. Anything with paint on doesn't go through the ultrasonic cleaner because the cleaner will do a really good job of removing paint if you don't want it to. Just checking the shutter release. Sometimes there's a small spacer washer on the shutter release and it's important to make sure you get that you find it and avoid losing it if it's present uh, otherwise it's very hard synchronizing the shutter release and the film release action I'm just separating the springs there and I will remove the rewind shaft assembly complete. And the film advance. I've just cocked the shutter by forcing the rack in that direction. Unhook that spring. Okay. Just allowed that to run back. That's better. I've got access to the three screws that hold the, this piece down. That screw's loose. Alright, it's lucky I'm here to service the camera then. That would inevitably caused us a lot of grief otherwise. If screws back out, even if the lack of the screw doesn't cause an immediate problem for the part that it holds in place, the loose screw can easily find itself down into some critical area like the film advance gears here and um, jam something up. Well if it jams something up and the owner doesn't realise that there's a problem and forces the advance then there's every likelihood that something will break. And as is always the way with old cameras, if parts are required, they're usually going to have to come from an organ donor. 
here are no new parts. Yeah, I didn't see the spring. from the base of this lever. I don't see it on the table so that probably means it's still jammed down in that hole. I'll have to retrieve that later. Three screws hold the bush at the top of the film advance shaft. These screws are tight. So we've got a mixture, some screws loose, some screws tight, that can come off. Here's the clutch assembly, I'll just split that, that goes through the cleaner. And that basically is the top of the camera, I'd like to retrieve that spring. Now I fished for it with a toothpick as you could see and I've retrieved the spring we'll give it the benefit of the, benefit of the doubt um, if I'd seen that spring loose on the bench I wouldn't have picked that it was the right spring for that job but I have seen minor variations from time to time which would be For a couple of reasons, it may be that the original spring was lost at some stage when the camera was serviced in the past, or it may be that when the camera was being manufactured, for one reason or another, the springs that they required for that particular job were not available, or not available now, and so a near equivalent was used instead. Now this is genuine leather on this camera. And it's peeling back fairly easily. You can see it's leaving leather fibres on the surface that tells me that the uh, adhesive is was very good usually when I'm doing the leather on here I want to get it right back to this stage because otherwise when you glue it back if you're only to feel peel it back this far for example and glue it back you'll end up with a line a visible line across there where you change from the fresh glue to where it was previously stuck down. If you can force that line back to this point then it effectively becomes invisible. Be a bit cautious here because it's Here's the hole where it goes around this button. Oh, that's good. I need to peel it back this far. Well, not quite as far as that. I need to peel it back this far because there's a screw under at this point which holds the bellows in place, or the struts in place. But I also need to get the tripod socket off so that I can pull out the film advance shaft. And there are usually Zeiss bumps at this point because those screws are brass. They're not nickel-plated brass. They're just bare brass. And they inevitably end up with corrosion at that point. That's good.
three screws hold the film advance shaft lower bush into place. Hold that bit tab, I can lift the shaft out. That's quite clean actually. I was expecting to see sticky dried grease on there, but that wasn't the case. You can take out the take up spool. That's quite clean. Here's the metal bush from the base of it. Again, that's relatively clean. The rewind button needs to come off. I'll remove the rewind button, special pliers there modified to do the job. To make special tools like that, the trick is you go down to the hardware shop, you buy some pliers, the cheapest pliers you can find, because they're likely to be made out of not particularly hard steel. And then you can come home and grind them and drill them to your heart's content to make them fit the job. If you buy top quality tools, you'll probably find that they are especially tough grades of steel. And you can't easily grind or modify them. Right, so. This little catch that holds the Rewind that screw is loose. Yeah. It holds the rewind button in the locked up position when you press the rewind button in. And that in turn is released when you move the film advance lever to unlock the button. One screw for the hinge pin for the door, top and bottom. There is usually one washer, either at the top or the bottom position. Sometimes two. Here's one. Here's another. That's good. I'm going to stretch that door to lift it off the off there. Now there are two cartridge paper washers under there, which just stop this slopping around on the frame, and they probably stop it scratching it to to some extent too. Shutter and lens assembly. Well, I've got my tool here. This is a uh, Belgian tool, the ones that you can't get anymore. Is our shutter and lens assembly and the retaining ring. Pop those to one side. Here we go. Now, take off the shroud at the front here. 
that covers the coupling gear that cocks the shutter. And the screws and other pieces can go through. This part doesn't go through the cleaner, otherwise it will just neatly remove the green paint in there. Two screws on this little mounting plate. This plate would have an arm on it and couple to the rangefinder on a 2A camera. Of course, this is a 1A camera with no rangefinder and so it doesn't have the arm. This position here is to position the shutter in the camera. It couples with this pin here on the shutter to stop the shutter from rotating in the mount. So I've got to mark my focus mount now so that everything goes back together in the correct position. So I normally scribe a line across that in a couple of places. So I've got my focus set at the infinity position here. I normally Take my rule, scribe a line across the two outer sections. That's the focus scale ring and the outer helical, not the inner helical. Do the same at the top. I just put a single line at the top. Now, to align the inner helical and outer helical so I know where they will go back together, in this case, I can't turn this back far enough until those surfaces are level. And that's where I'd normally choose to make my alignment mark. You have to have a point that you can easily recognise so that you can be sure that you have everything back in the same position where it started from. Now let's see if I can turn this. Now this is what I'm doing here, is I'm rotating this and I'm checking with my rule again to pick the point where those surfaces are level and it's right there. Now I will extend my lines that I'd scribed on the outer helical to the inner helical. One there, one there and one opposite there. That allows me to put the inner and outer helical together and be sure that I've got them correctly aligned. Because I've used, chosen to use two lines here and one line at the top, it tells me which way up it goes so that I can't, I shouldn't be able to mistakenly put it in the mount upside down. So I've got six screws hold the retainer in place. That was screw was loose. Sometimes when you're working on old cameras you will find these screws are loose and typically it's because there was some problem with the focus mechanism, the helical, and someone has left those screws purposely loose so that the mechanism isn't tight to move. Of course it's not a good way of doing things, but it's done. Right, so the inner and outer helical are there. That grease is very dried out and nasty looking. You can probably see it on the mount there. All that thick brown scunge, uh, that all has to come out. These black screws at the corners here, they hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. And that was the bellows just falling away back into the body. These four uh, nickel plated screws, countersunk head screws, hold the focus mount to the front standard. And 
lift out the focus mount I want to recover my four black screws that held the bellows in place this piece I cleaned by hand uh, if you were to try and do it any other way you'd end up losing the black paint of course it's got a felt like trap on the back anyway now I need to remove the struts from the body one screw at the top here that did come loose, it was very tight one screw at the base which will be buried underneath the adhesive right here, you can see it there commonly that's much harder to get loose because of the adhesive two in the body in the film cassette well at this end none of those three screws want to move so I'm going to use some brutal tactics basically I'm going to use this old screwdriver like an impact driver and I'm going to tap it with a hammer and it, I expect those screws to come loose so first I'll do the two on the end in the film cassette well one two and I do that holding the camera body between my knees which is why you can't see me doing it on camera and we've got one at the base of the camera here be fairly gentle doing this you just needs a couple of sharp taps to, typically that's it and it just breaks that those screws loose if you go get too heavy handed with the camera you will actually distort the body casting so use a small hammer and give it a sharp tap don't use your great big 16 ounce east wing carpenter's hammer take these parts out now I have my body empty ready to be cleaned so basically all of these areas I need to clean now with some naphtha and just make sure I get all the dust and dirt out you can see there's a fair bit of dust here in the body that's quite normal um, if the camera has been sitting in someone's display for years this will really fill up with dust right so that's going to be fairly easy these parts have to go off and soak in the degreaser and then after that they will be go through the ultrasonic cleaner so when they come back they will look like new shiny parts and they won't have been as shiny for that for the last 65 years the top cover not much to note about the top cover this is a particular example you'll notice that you, you can just see the ends of screws here you can't see the heads of the screws the shoe is fixed with screws from the inside that was done at one stage 
Um, typically that was done because instead of printing the serial number on the top of the camera or engraving it on the top of the camera, someone came up with the clever idea of engraving it into the shoe instead. Now, when you engraved it into the shoe instead, that was easier because it's much easier to handle a small thing like this in the machinery rather than moving whole top covers about the place and risk damaging them. So they fixed the shoe with screws from the inside so that people couldn't change the camera, change the serial number of the camera simply by swapping shoes over. But of course the screws they used were small. They're smaller than the original screws would have been used going the other way. And as a result, they're prone to coming loose, probably after something's been forced in the flash shoe and it's pr provided some tension or stretch on those screws. Then they come loose. Typically they fall out. They, they either escape, probably out of the hole around the rewind, or they tend to fall down somewhere inconvenient, typically in the film advance mechanism, and that's when you end up with broken stuff. But this particular case, this is a very unusual camera because it has a shoe fitted from the, with screws on the inside, but it has a serial number on the top plate itself. So I don't know what to make of that. That's obviously made at some transition point when they're moving from one to the other. So the earlier cameras all have the screws for the shoe on the outside. There was a period when they were made like this and then they gave up on that fairly promptly because of the problems and they went back to screws on the outside and serial number here. Interesting. Okay, well I've just cleaned the top cover. I removed the accessory shoe, cleaned everything, put it back. I'm just putting a touch of lacquer on those screw heads to avoid them being able to work loose at any stage in the future. That should be sufficient. I've had the glass the front and rear glass out of the finder, um, clean those, now the viewfinder is nice and clean, you can see through it. It was a very dirty yellowy mess before and that was just filth on the glass, um, cleaned away fairly easily. I just used normal domestic glass cleaner to do a job like that. I did discover something about this serial numbered camera. And this is basically one, a transition model if you like. At the end of the time they used shoes screwed and fixed from the inside. This is a transition at that time when they went back to the old practice of numbering the top cover. And shortly after that it would have had a shoe that was, had the screws on the outside not the inside. So it was a transition model if you like, that was just a change in production while they were moving from one to the other and presumably wanting to use up their stock of accessory shoes. I'll carry on cleaning. Okay, I'm starting work on the shutter and lens assembly now. So, ah, yep, front group is unscrewing. Typically you can just get that loose with your fingers. Um, occasionally you can't. The rear group is much harder to get to deal to. There's a, a couple of slots in there that I can engage a tool. Um, if you don't have a tool handy you may have something else that will do the job. In this case this rule will do the job. This is very tight. The, it's very tight on the threads. I'm not sure why that should be. Perhaps it was stuck down with a bit of lacquer, something like that. It's not coming loose at all. So I would suspect that there's something in the threads that's causing that to lock up. I might try a dribble of um, acetone down here 
and work it backwards and forwards a few times. Well, I turned that another quarter of a turn and suddenly it broke free. I'm looking to see if there's any sign that there was a spot of lacquer on there, but honestly I can't see one. Just one of those things then. Checking the, the state of the shutter, the diaphragm moves okay. Um, there's no great sign of oil on those blades. The shutter blades, however, do have a bit of oil, an oily look to them. You can typically see it as a dark line where the blades overlap each other. And I can certainly see that in a couple of cases there. So now that needs to be stripped down. The way into the shutter. Well, from the front, first I need to turn this lock screw around. To unlock it from the notch and then the front should just bayonet off so you turn that anti-clockwise and that just lifts off we can lift off the shutter speed setting camera ring I'll zoom in a little bit more Right, need to unhook this spring from this latch lever here. The spring here for the main lever, that's this ring here, it's called the main lever. I've unhooked that, from the spring from its post and now I can should be able to lift the main lever out. The shutter release lever can be lifted out. This is the B lever. Can you even see this? This is the B lever. It's got its own return spring on it. I'm just loosening that screw off slightly. Unhook the return spring so it's not under tension. Undo the screw. The return spring typically comes off with the screw. And I'll pop those small parts into a container so I don't lose them. We have two screws that hold the flash sink mechanism here, the top plate of that in place. Well that B lever can be lifted off now, there's nothing holding that. At this end, of course, there's a spring on that lever, so it'll want to push the lever away. It's okay, it didn't ping away anywhere. Move the screw from the other end. And lift this. cover off. It's tucked under, there's a little tab on it and it's tucked under the casting at this point so you've got to lever it off from this side. There's minor variations with this part. Don't lose its return spring. Be careful not to lose that. Okay. Two little brass standoffs there. This is the top part of this piece here. It's just clipped into place. I'll unhook the spring from that lever. A single screw here holds this flash sink post in place or flash sink in place that's the lever and it's operating the flash contact and it's operating lever take off this spring this spring is the 500th of a second or high speed spring take off this cam take off the pallet 
I leave the retard gear train in place on the, sh on the mach shutter. It typically can be cleaned in place successfully and it is a bugger to put back if you move it. I'm going to remove the outer case, two screws from the back. Lift the case up. Be aware that the flash sink wire is still attached at the post at this point. So I've got to unscrew that. I'm just loosening that screw. Lift the wire out. Here's our curved rack. This strip here is the click stops, if you like, for the aperture settings. Now that little black screw that held the flash sink wire in place, I'm removing the screw. Don't lose it, it's very small. Now there's something even smaller here to worry about. There's a plastic insulator underneath that screw which you don't want to lose, because otherwise you'll have to fashion a replacement. I'll take the screw off the, it holds that flash sink post in place, I'll lift that off, and I can probably encourage that out of the shutter, now I can, that just fell out, they don't always fall out, sometimes you need to nudge them. And I'm looking to see if the plastic insulator is present. And it's not. Which tells me that the flash in this camera didn't work because whoever serviced it last time had missed that plastic insulator so that the flash wire, that screw, would have been binding directly into the flash wire and as a result the out a flash would never trigger. It would... Um, it was closed all the time. The switch was effectively closed. Okay, so it means I've got to find one of those. That's okay, I can do that. To split the shutter, you have three screws at the back. They go through the outer case into the mechanism plate. Those screws are all identical, nothing tricky about it. I'll split the case. No, it doesn't want to come apart. There we go. There's our mechanism plate. One of the blades fell off. I can see they're a little bit oily, nothing dramatic there. We'll need to deal with that. And the shutter case itself, I need to take this all apart. So I turn the setting lever to expose the heads of the screws here and here through those notches. There's our setting lever. I'll tip this over, retrieve those two screws. Now back to the case, the three screws hold the retainer plate in place, one of them is a countersunk head screw, now that screw was loose, if the, so was that one, if these screws are loose and back out they will catch on the shutter blades and prevent the shutter from working so it's quite important that the uh, screws are not loose. Oh, that retainer plate came off by itself and took this lot out. So here we have our rosette of diaphragm blades and these ones came apart easily because they are not oily. Uh, quite commonly 
if they're oily they'll come out as a nice rosette like that but they wouldn't fall apart just by shaking them. These of course have all got to be carefully cleaned and then put back into the case. So everything here needs to be cleaned to remove all traces of old oil, any dust, dirt, uh, any other problems and then I can reassemble the, the diaphragm here, get that back into the shutter case and turn my attentions to the mechanism plate.